Labour is today managing the difficult politics of asylum seekers with the Immigration Minister in Dili for talks about a regional processing centre. We're going to cross to Canberra now where political editor Chris Yulman is joined by the National Senator Fiona Nash and Melbourne Labour MP Michael Danby. Well, Michael Danby and Fiona Nash, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chris. Fiona Nash, to you, to you first. There's, we've seen a meeting in Shepparton today of the Murray Darling Basin Authority now beginning to roll out around to the communities the plans that it has for water reductions in the basin. And I know the National Party has been, we well, would appear, adamantly opposed to this, but we do have to do something about reducing allocations, don't we? Well, we have a huge amount of concern about the plan as it stands. What the government is looking to do is remove around a third of the water entitlement across the basin. Now, that's probably around. Uh, um, around 16, 16 billion dollars worth of, uh, of entitlement, so it's very, very significant. So 16 percent of production out of the uh, out of the basin. But what we're really concerned about is the effect on our rural communities from permanently removing this water. Now, it is going to significantly impact those communities, and the government has not done enough work on the social and economic impacts of permanently removing that water from those communities. Now this is going to mean tens of thousands of jobs from those communities and it is going to mean people's livelihoods completely taken away from them. Of course we've got to look at the environment and make sure that the, the basin is healthy. But the government has to ensure that they have taken the appropriate steps on the impacts that this is going to have and we don't believe that they have done that. Michael Danby, by all accounts that meeting in Shepparton was fairly emotional. Are you concerned about this process at all? Uh, yes, but I, I do think it's alarmist to say that it's going to lead to the loss of tens of thousands of jobs. Tony Brooks made the, the strong point that the whole point of this is to consult people. O obviously, we don't want uh, people in regional Australia to uh, be uh, be unemployed. Um, the the re reduction in water usage in the Murray-Darling, I would have thought a lot of country people, including Fiona, would support. I mean, we saw prior to the, the recent floods the Murray-Darling system nearly collapse. The entrance uh, uh, in Adelaide completely silted over. Uh, look, this is in the long-term interests of Australia, and one of the things, obviously, a reduction in, in uh, the amount of water allocated to irrigators won't necessarily mean if a more efficient use of water is made uh, that um, it will lower uh, food production. Fiona Nash, you, you began this process, the Howard government began this mm -hmm. process, so surely you must be in favour of at least the way, the direction in which they're moving. We did, but our focus was very much on the infrastructure efficiency. Now there was $5.8 billion that we put up at the time to make the use of the water more efficient across the basin. Now where this government has completely fallen down is to this stage they've only spent about $380 million of that and their focus has been on the buybacks, not on the more efficient utilisation of the water. Now, it is ridiculous to say that it's not going to have an impact. The removal of that water is going to cost thousands and thousands of jobs. And uh, even though Michael suggests that's alarmist, it is not alarmist. It is a fact that if you take that water out of those basin communities, you see industry shut down and you see jobs lost. And it is as simple as that. Now, the real concern we have here down the track as well is if we can't feed ourselves as a nation, if we are going to take this water out of these communities, and reduce our ability to feed ourselves as a nation, we're going to become an importer of food. People have real concerns about this, particularly around quality assurance. In other countries, we haven't got the quality assurance we'd often like to see. You've only got to look at melamine in China. And the issue of security of supply. If we haven't got the ability to feed ourselves in this nation, then we have an issue with security of supply. And I don't think people in this country want to be like Oliver Twist holding out the bone and holding out the bowl to the overseas country saying, please, sir, can I have some more. Michael, da Michael Dab, are you concerned at all about the possibility that we would affect our food security and also food prices in the long run? Really, Fiona. I mean, Australia is um, thriving at the moment. Uh, wheat prices are at all time highs. Um, everyone is doing better than they were before. We have a serious problem with the Murray Darling Basin. Um, people uh, like Tony Burke are not going to um, send people broke because they want some vengeance on 
country people. This is a serious problem that we've got to address in, in, a, in, a, in a way where there's consultations and mature discussions. But to, to suggest that uh, Australia is going to have to become a food importer and import uh, uh, Chinese products which is going to poison people, I mean, it's really, come on, it's over the top stuff. It's not over the top at all, Michael, and look, I understand... Come on, it's over the top stuff. It's not over the top at all, Michael. And look, I understand you're, you're city based and perhaps you haven't spent enough time in regional communities. But everything I've said. I thought you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's absolutely true. Everything I've said is quite serious and quite factual. You only got to go out into these communities, talk to the people, talk to the businesses, talk to the industries, talk to the representative groups, and there is a serious issue here. Now, the, the Minister, Tony Burke, has said that he's, uh, he's going to accept whatever the Basin Authority puts up to him. Now that is a real abrogation of his responsibility. Contained in the Act is the exact requirement for him to be able to ask the authority to alter or amend or indeed uh, put his own, uh, his own perspective on that and have his requirements met. So he should start taking some responsibility in this because the consultation period is ridiculous. At the moment we've got no technical background and he's saying he's going to accept the authority's right, thoughts anyway. Michael Danby, one last word on this before we move yeah. on. Chris, is this the, the country party tail wagging the free market liberal dog? I mean, we're meant to be the socialists. God, this is... Uh, <laughs> I, I, a, a, a think price I'm on, on, on scarce, scarce water resources is surely something that's, uh, that's sensible. All right, just quickly, uh, Chris Bowen is in Timor at the moment. He's met with the President there. Hopefully we'll be hearing from the President himself a little bit later on this afternoon, but they've held a press conference. It, it seems, Fiona Nash, that the, mm. the Regional Processing Centre is underway, or at least discussions on it, so you must at least be pleased with that because offshore processing, what's mm. the Coalition wants? Well, certainly the discussions are, are happening. Uh, one of the concerns is, of course, that East Timor is only still talking about a temporary solution. We have said all the way along that this government has got it wrong in in terms of the policy for asylum seekers. Now, we've seen something like 143 boats now come and over 8,000 uh, asylum seekers come by boat. This government has to fix its policy when it comes to making sure that our borders are secure. Michael Danby, is the policy wrong? Uh, well, under previous Liberal governments, we've had regional processing centres. Uh, uh, when we had the Vietnamese boat people, uh, Malcolm Fraser had such centres. But I, I tell you one thing, Chris, that all of us, um, including people in the opposition, have to consider, and that is if we do have regional processing centres, we've got to agree, all of the countries that are wealthy enough to uh, process refugees, to take some of them, as the Liberal government uh, did under Malcolm Fraser. It's not just a matter of setting up these uh, centres wherever they are, whether Timor or accepts them or uh, whether some other place does but once they're there we have to work out what we do with those people because um, if they're entitled to be resettled they're human beings and they have to be treated properly. But on that Michael Danby the Labor government doesn't seem all that enthusiastic about taking these people. Well um, uh, we've taken uh, a number uh, as the previous Howard government did. Uh, what was so ironic about all of the, the people that they sent out to uh, these remote places was the vast majority of them came back to Australia or New Zealand in the end including all of the people on, on the Tampa. And that was what we certainly did see, even though those people were, were, were processed offshore, that a great many of them, mm. Fiona Nash, did end up back in Australia. Well, some did, but I think you've only got to look at the very clear distinction between the policy we had in a coalition government, which resulted in very, very few boats coming to our shores. You've only got to transpose onto that the government's policy that they have now, which has meant a flood of boats. Now, you haven't got to be a rocket scientist to figure out that the change in policy has been primarily responsible for the boats coming to these shores and it is, it is that policy that has resulted in this happening. Chris, I was the chairman of the uh, Migration Committee and visited Curtin Detention Centre recently. The majority of these people are Afghan Hazaras and um, uh, Fiona should go and meet some of them and she'll discover that um, uh, whatever the policy of Australia was, they left because of the circumstances in their own country primarily and uh, you can't divorce what happens in Australia from the rest of the world um, it's a global village and uh, what happens in uh, uh, certain parts of Afghanistan is going to affect uh, the number of refugees who seek asylum in uh, other parts of the world including Australia mm. and we have to face up to it like big people mm. like a country of 22 million that's not scared
Mm. Just quickly on that Fiona Nash before we, we go back to something else. Well certainly one of the things that's often raised with me is, is the queue jumper nature, nature of this and Michael's right these people uh, by and large often have very serious issues but somebody was raising with me just yesterday and they said why is it that all of those those genuine refugees who are waiting in camps we only take about 13,000 people a year that they have to wait doing the right thing they're going through all the proper processes and yet they see what they term as few jumpers and people jumping the queue taking the opportunity to come here not by the appropriate means. Michael Danby on another issue you have a great interest in foreign affairs and I said you've been writing today about Iran and you believe that sanctions are enough to curtail Iran's nuclear ambitions are you certain of that? Well I I'm doing something I think Tony Abbott should have done with Julia Gillard and, and been bipartisan on this I've praised the uh, uh, the opposition for saying that uh, they support additional sanctions that Australia is moving on Iran. All of us want to avoid um, uh, a regime having nuclear weapons that's very aggressive. I suppose the, the difference for Australians to understand, Chris, is that unlike a lot of countries where we don't share political systems, China or Russia, for instance, that also have nuclear weapons, this is a country that has said very aggressive things about its potential use of them. And that's why it's important that um, strong democratic countries like Australia add their voice to the international concern about this and do something about it. We've, but, we've banned four shipments of dual-use items from Australia to Iran and I'm very pleased to see that both sides of politics in this country are going to be involved in uh, taking further uh, sanctions against that regime to try and stop them short of war from uh, uh, putting that aggression into practice. All right, well then, Michael Danby, we'll see if we can end on a bipartisan note. Fiona Nash? Uh, I think we definitely will be able to. Obviously, sanctions uh, are the measure that we would prefer to use. Certainly, military intervention is, is, is a last resort. So, where we can have sanctions appropriately used, and certainly in a bipartisan nature, I think that's the appropriate way forward. The autonomous sanctions legislation that's come through, in principle, the coalition sorting that, we, uh, supporting that. We have a few issues about the domestic privacy uh, information so we would prefer it to go off to a committee but certainly sanctions are definitely the preferred method forward. All right well on that note of accord Michael Danby, Fiona Nash, thank you. <laughs> Thanks Chris. Thanks Chris. Overseas